Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a display from LG. This is their 27UK850-W, 27 inches, 4K, costs about $650, so it does run on the premium side of things, but uh, there are a lot of nice things about this display, which we're going to be exploring in this video. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed this video before I uploaded it. So let's get into it and see what this display is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Again, a 4K display, 27 inches. It's an IPS panel, so you've got really nice viewing angles. I think it's like 175 degrees to the left and the right, so the image doesn't really drop off when you uh, move the display around here, so it looks good from most angles. Of note, it supports HDR10, uh, so if you have a game console that supports HDR color or a PC or a set-top box or a Blu-ray player, anything that supports those new 4K HDR color modes uh, will work here. So you could plug a 4K Blu-ray player into this, for example, and have the movies look correct on it uh, with their natural color mode. Really looks uh, pretty nice, and again, you're paying a premium price for it. It has four inputs in the back. Uh, what I've got running on it right now is my MacBook Pro, which is connecting up via USB-C. And I've got a single cable running to the MacBook Pro from the back of the display right now, but uh, this laptop is getting powered by the display. It has the ability to deliver 60 watts of power over the USB-C connection. So most Ultrabooks should be able to be fully powered by the monitor. You just put your uh, computer down on the table like this, hook up that cable, and uh, you are good to go. Uh, note, though, that if you have a larger laptop, like a big gaming laptop, or even something like this 15-inch MacBook Pro, 60 watts is not enough to give the laptop all the power it needs. But if you do have a smaller device that has a 60 watt or less power supply, uh, you'll be able to power your laptop with it. It also has a DisplayPort input and two HDMI inputs. Uh, all of those can run at 4K up to 60 hertz. There's no faster refresh rate on this beyond the 60, but uh, if you are looking for something that can do 60 hertz 4K, uh, this will certainly do it. In fact, we're playing a uh, 60 frames per second video from YouTube here right now, and it seems to be uh, working very nicely. Also in the back is a headphone jack, so you can plug in your headphones to the back of the display. It has speakers built in, uh, but the speakers don't sound all that great. They kind of echo around inside of its plastic case here, but uh, you do have internal speakers along with the option to connect up some headphones. And if you are connecting your computer via USB-C, uh, there are two USB ports on the back, regular USB 3 ports, so you can use this as kind of a mini USB hub. So you could plug in an external hard drive into the back of the monitor, for example, and that storage will be available to you once you plug in your computer to the display here. So all in a nice uh, amount of connectivity. I also like the fact that they give you a bunch of cables in the box, including an HDMI cable, display port cable, and a USB Type-C cable. You can see my unboxing on my extras channel to see exactly what's in the box. Now the display has a 1000 to 1 contrast ratio, so it does have nice deep blacks for movie watch and video playback and whatnot. It also supports 99% of sRGB, so I think it should be adequate for photo editing and that sort of thing. Uh, response rate on this one is 5 milliseconds, which means you won't get a lot of motion blur when you have fast motion on screen, uh, which is great, especially when you're playing back 60 frames per second content like this, so uh, that is good to see. Uh, for gamers, it supports AMD FreeSync, uh, what we've seen out of all of these AMD displays is they typically have a range between 40 and 60 hertz where that free sync will be useful. And what that does is it smooths out the frame rate. So even if your uh, computer is delivering a variable frame rate between 40 and 60 frames per second, the monitor will not uh, tear or uh, look jumpy and whatnot. So if you have an AMD graphics processor on your computer, uh, you should be able to see some benefit using this display with it. It does not support NVIDIA G-Sync, however. And the spec sheet says it supports FreeSync over HDMI. So if your Xbox supports FreeSync, it should be able to work with this display. Uh, brightness on this one is 350 nits, which is actually pretty nice for what I've seen from LG displays in the past. I have another one that I got about a year or two ago that uh, looks a bit dimmer than this one, so it really is nice and bright. 
Uh, by comparison, if you were to hook it up to an iMac 5K, for example, those typically run around 500 nits. So not as bright as a Mac display is, but I think uh, more than adequately bright enough for uh, most tasks. I've been very pleased with the image quality even under normal room lighting. Now, one thing I have dinged LG on in the past has been the quality of their stands. They haven't been all that sturdy, and they were very wobbly on some of the monitors I was using from about a year or two ago. This one's a lot better. So if I shake the desk here, you can see the monitor stays pretty stable. This is a cheap IKEA desk, which usually knocks everything on the table here, and the monitor is staying uh, very much in place, which is good. So the stand has been improved quite a bit. Now, I have been showing you viewing angles here by moving the entire stand around, and that's because there is no left to right swivel on this. Uh, you do have an angle adjustment on it, though, so you can adjust the display like so. And you can also move the display up and down here uh, with the uh, hydraulics here in the stand. So at least you've got those kind of movements. Uh, if you don't want to use the stand, you can disconnect it from the back here, and there is a visa mount that you can use for using your own kind of mount if you want. So if you want to do a wall mount or something, you can do that with this display. You can also run it in portrait mode if you want just by uh, rotating it around like so. So you do have a number of options for uh, mounting the display here and getting it to, to your uh, desired position, if you will, while you're using it. And again, I'm really uh, quite pleased with what they've done with the stand here. Now, I did want to show you some reasons why you might want to consider going with a 4K display at this size versus a perhaps less expensive 1080p display. And the reason is that you get four times the amount of pixels on screen, which means that things will look a lot sharper and a lot nicer as a result. So let me just show you how much resolution is on here, because when you plug in a Mac or Windows PC to this, uh, the size of things on the screen is going to look about the same size it would be with a lower resolution display. But when you go into the scaling options that you'll have on uh, Windows and the Mac, you'll actually get a feel for just how much resolution you have. So right now it's in its default scaled mode. And if I go over here to its native 4K resolution, uh, you can see just how much room there is on the screen uh, for this window to appear, for example. So you just have so much more resolution. And when you run in these scaled modes, uh, what it does is it takes advantage of that resolution and these tiny little pixels that it has packed into this panel uh, to make text a lot sharper. Because when you have very small pixels, you can make rounded edges really look round. And text is going to appear sharper. In many cases, it's going to represent what you might see on a printed page, or at least uh, something that you might have seen on your high resolution phone display. Yet you'll have this very nice 27 inches of real estate here to play with. Photos look a lot sharper. It's a lot better for editing pictures because you do have so much more resolution to look at. And it's one of those things that when you first experience it, uh, you'll never want to go back to a lower resolution display, even though we, we're only fitting about the same amount of stuff on screen we would with a lower resolution display. We are getting everything just significantly sharper here, and it really looks quite nice. Now, there are some on-screen controls on here. Nothing crazy, but uh, there is a little joystick here under the LG logo. If you push it in, uh, you'll get this little pinwheel that will open up here. Now, if you want to put the monitor into game mode, uh, what you do is just push down towards that game thing, and it will then put the monitor uh, into that game mode. And what it will do is uh, remove some of the image processing that it's doing to give you less lag or latency when you're uh, pushing buttons on your game controller. So things will react a little quicker. We ran our usual latency test on this, and we came up with about 68 milliseconds from the time that I pushed a button on an Xbox One controller that was connected via USB to the computer to when something reacted on screen. Uh, that compares to about 44 milliseconds of latency on a 144 hertz gaming monitor that I have over there. So it looks like a little bit more overhead on this one than what you might see on a traditional gaming monitor, but uh, I think it should be fine for uh, casual gaming. I think those who are really hardcore gamers are going to buy a monitor that is better suited for uh, that kind of activity. My only gripe here is that if you want to go out of game mode, you have to go through the settings screen here, go back to picture mode, and then uh, put it back to the setting you had before. So it's a little bit of extra work here to switch out of game mode, and it's very easy to get into it. So I would have liked this to have been more of a toggle, perhaps, than uh, a uh, one-way direction here on that. And they have some granular color controls. So if you want to dive in and uh, make some fine-tuning calibration, you can do that. So they have the basics here, RGB and color temperature. And then you can jump into six color here and uh, really go nuts with uh, your adjustments if you wish. So you have that option available to you. 
Uh, the display is a matte finish display, so it's not very reflective as you can see. I'm under my studio lights here so you can see what it looks like when you've got a bright light shining on it. So it's not as bad as a uh, Mac display might be, so that's good. Uh, but one thing you run into with these IPS displays is backlight bleed, and I did notice some on this one, uh, specifically on this portion of the screen over here. I ran a, a little test where I shot a uh, photo in a dark room so you can get a better feel for it. And the exposure in that photo is exaggerating things just slightly here, but it is visible uh, when you've got something dark on screen. Uh, you will see some of that backlight bleed over here, and I'm seeing more of it as I go off angle uh, with the display. So it is there. You'll see it if you've got something dark on screen or maybe if you have letterbox movies playing. Not all that distracting. I had an LG television that was more distracting with the backlight bleed, but uh, it is there and it is visible. And unlike a TV, you can't turn off the backlight in certain corners of the set to adjust for it. So it'll be there. It just won't be uh, terribly noticeable under most circumstances. But if you are using a lot of dark scenes in the games or movies that you're watching, I think you'll probably see it. So all in, I am very pleased with the display. It is expensive, and that's because you're paying for the HDR color and the USB-C power delivery and probably a nicer stand. But uh, there is an LG display that costs a little over $300 that is the same size IPS and also 4K. It doesn't have the USB-C power, nor does it have the HDR. Uh, but you'll get the resolution out of it. And I found their 24-inch version of that low-cost 4K display look great, and I would expect the 27 to uh, deliver similar performance and visual quality. So if you're looking for 4K and don't want to spend this much, uh, there is an option. It just doesn't look as cool as this one does, and again, uh, lacks the HDR and the USB-C. I'll put a link in the video description to my review of that 24-inch display and a link to where you can get it on Amazon if you are looking to go 4K but aren't ready to spend $650 to get there. But all in, great display here from LG. The only issue I have, again, is with the backlight bleed on the side, but otherwise I think a really nice display to pair up with your USB Type-C equipped laptop that can support 4K at 60 Hz. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.